Welcome. My name is Dan Gretsch, and this is the season finale of season two of BizHack Live and our digital marketers graduation party. It's been a heck of a 2020, a year I don't think many of us are going to miss. And I'm really looking forward to celebrating the amazing businesses that have come through BizHack uh, this incredible year. Uh, this is the part of the BizHack Live series. We're going to be starting season three right after the new year. I'll talk to you about that in a little bit. This series has been recognized with an American Marketing Association Award for Global Campaign of the Year, and we could not be prouder of that honor. Thanks to all of you who have been a part of BizHack Live as presenters and as guests. We've had more than a thousand businesses that have participated in BizHack Live. My name is Dan Gretsch. I'm the CEO and founder of BizHack, as well as the host of BizHack Live and the course creator of the Digital Marketer's Edge and How to Find Customers Online, the two courses that we're gonna be celebrating today. My background is as a business storyteller, first as a journalist, then as a marketer, now as an educator. Today, we're going to celebrate the amazing group called Thrive Tribe, and I love that name. We've had many different cohorts, and I don't think there's ever been a name that I've liked more. So congratulations, guys to uh, giving yourself a name that really speaks to the moment in which we're living and to really embodying the biz hacker mentality in your name. These are folks who have spent the last six weeks working their tails off as part of our accelerated program in digital marketing called the Digital Marketer's Edge. And with them, there are 123 certificates that we're gonna be giving out as part of a grant funded course that we offered through the Village of Pinecrest called How to Find Customers Online. We are just so thrilled to have been, to be able to brought, brought this course to more than a thousand businesses worldwide. We have had folks this year in just these cohorts from places as far flung as Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, New Zealand, we've had London, Dubai. BizHack has truly gone international and there was a wonderful surprise that I'll be sharing with you in a little bit about just how international we've become. Today, we're gonna share case studies of real life campaigns. We're gonna have a graduation ceremony for all of these amazing market, small business marketers. We're gonna give our highest honor to the Biz Hacker Award. This is the highest honor that we have here at the school, and at the academy, and we're gonna have that person who embodies the spirit of the Biz Hacker uh, join us. We have a class photo, uh, so you can see everybody who's here today. Make sure to put on your videos, uh, fix your hair, uh, thank you gifts raffle throughout, and then a, finally a special musical surprise. So buckle up and here we go. First, we're gonna start with the thank you gifts raffle and Lilia, feel free to uh, go ahead. So first is 15% off of any order from Nuts and Nuts, Cirilla Suwarsa's business. Uh, this is a, a cashew uh, company and the winner is? Tom Virgin. Next, we have 50% off virtual photo booth. This is from Fun Click USA by Jarvis Benzo Beznos. And it goes to Amy Williams. And we have three sheets of wrapped ensemble, which is reusable fabric gift wrap, perfect for the holidays. That's from Cindy Estes of wrapped gift wrap. And the winner is? Ruth Ann Smith. Yay, Ruth Ann. Mm. So why do we give thank you gifts? Why does our cohort, why does the Thrive Tribe give thank you gifts? And the reason why is because we understand that we could not be here without you. These folks have taken so much of their time and their attention over the last six weeks, nights and weekends, five hours of live instruction during the day and they, during the week. And they are grateful to you, your community, your friends and family for allowing them to have the time to better themselves and to work on their business. And so this thank you gift is an acknowledgement that we are a community. This is also an, uh, a way for us, for them to be welcomed into the larger BizHack community of more than 700 businesses. In many cultures, you give a gift 
when you enter a community. You're, you don't receive a gift like we do in the United States, but you give a gift when you enter into a community. And that's also part of the spirit here is that we want to be a community of gift givers. And so that one of the first acts that we do as a tradition for our for them entering into the alumni community is to give the gift of a uh, thank you. This has been a, a crazy year. And I, before we get started, I want to start with a number three. Three is the number of weeks left that BizHack had at our lowest point in May. So when COVID happened, all of my customers went away. My corporates pushed their training to when it would be safe again to do it. And my next class, which was supposed to happen in April, had to get canceled because it was an in-person class. And the way that BizHack was structured is that we were a very transactional business. So every class funded the operation. Well, we had to cancel all cash. So no money was coming in. And we were three weeks away at BizHack from running out of money. On May 12th, when I checked my bank account, even if I did not pay myself, we could run for three more weeks. And it was the scariest moment of my life as a business owner. And at this time, we were already running the BizHack Live series. We started that back in March. And we were putting a brave face out there. But I was waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning with eyes like saucers and getting started at 2, 3, 4 in the morning working and working until 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, falling asleep on my keyboard. And then my body woke me up again at 3. That was what it was like. And that whole time, it was just Lily and me. And we had to let go of all of our other contractors. It was a horrible time. Well, we dug in and you, our community supported us. And by the end of May, so on May 12th, we had three weeks of life left, three weeks of cash in, on hand to cover our expenses. By the end of May, that number was 10 weeks. And I would track it week by week. And then by August, I was able to put an emergency fund into the bank as a separate bank account. And then here we are today, thriving as an online training company. It was one of the most harrowing years of my life. Uh, and it really gave me such an appreciation for what all of you are trying to do and how hard and scary and personal it is. So today is the year of the biz hacker. Today is the day where we celebrate you and what you are doing to try to pivot and adapt to COVID-19, a global pandemic, an economic downturn, and the most difficult economic situation of all of our lifetimes. This is the number of businesses that BizHack trained in 2020. This is our North Star. We are attempting to get as many businesses as possible touched by our training. And if we do that, we know that everything will work out. One of the biggest lessons I learned from BizHack Live is that the more you give away, the more you receive. And the amount of love and affection and support and yes, revenue that we have derived from the BizHack um, Live series has been has really saved the business. So when, when, when the going was worst and when the moments were most difficult was when we gave the most. And I didn't know it at the time. It's just what kind of came out uh, uh, of Lily and my work together, but it really saved us. And I think the reason why is because when we were at our lowest, we were in a giving place and people sensed the genuineness of what we were trying to do and they became supporters of us. You became supporters of us. We gave out 277 digital marketing certificates in 2020. More than half of them are gonna be today. 122 businesses went through the Pinecrest training. Another 30 went through the Digital Marketers Edge. We have doubled our, our total in just this gra graduation. The other four combined were uh, half that amount. We had 31 free community sessions a part of BizHack Live. This is the 31st. What an amazing uh, accomplishment uh, that was. And the other amazing accomplishment is what we've been able to do together. The theme of 
2020 for me, and especially for the Pinecrest training, was Stronger Together. And so we have come together with a gift guide. You can see there on the right that more than 20 Pinecrest-based businesses, uh, storefronts and home-based, and you're gonna meet some of them today, have participated in a gift guide that's gonna be distributed in the village of Pinecrest. But I'm so thrilled to announce that this morning, BizHack launched its own holiday gift guide with more than 70 amazing businesses. Uh, it's at bizhack.biz, check it out, uh, and do business with one another. One of the ways that we can be stronger together is thinking twice before we buy on Amazon or Target uh, or Walmart and look at these small businesses, this incredible array of small businesses that are in our communities and that need your support. And so if you can do business with local and do business with small, you should, and we are trying to give you the simplest, easiest way to do that. So we are thrilled to announce the gift guide. This is something that we have been wanting to do for years and we pulled it together in weeks. And that's part of what happens when you look at crisis as an opportunity. We are so mission driven at BizHack to support you right now because we hear your stories and cannot help but be moved by them. So the way to thank us for that is to just buy from each other and support one another and make Zanat and Serena and Julianne and all of the folk and Julie, all the folks that you're gonna be hearing from today more successful because that's how we can be stronger together and that's how we can get through this very dark winter. The Digital Marketers Edge is cohort 16. These are the members of the Digital Marketers Edge, uh, an amazing group, many of whom you're gonna to meet today. They've run 49 campaigns, spent more than $3,000 and had a return on investment of 38.7 on that ad spend. So for every $1 they spent, they had logged nearly $39 in lifetime value from their customers. Today, we're gonna to be talking about real life campaign presentations from them. And I now would love for David Phillip uh, of Kohana. Uh, I'll do a quick introduction, David. And then after the words, uh, Cheryl is gonna say a word uh, about you. So uh, here we go. David Phillip of Kohana is an amazing example of a business that was waiting to explode with a little bit of digital marketing help. He is in an industry sector that is incredibly important to the economy, healthcare, and he's about helping aging folks receive the healthcare that they need. But he needed to get the word out about the work that he was doing and he came to BizHack to do so. David came to us through the venture mentoring team and the amazing Bob Nelson. I'm so grateful for the introduction and David, congratulations on your great work this semester. I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thank you so much, Bob. Did you just call me Bob? Yes, I did. I'm sorry so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dan, I'm sorry. That's all right. Okay. Um, I, I can be a Bob for you, that's okay. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Um, incredible story, uh, very encouraging, and I'm glad to see uh, BizHack continue to take off the way it is. Uh, here we go. So yes, um, I'm the CEO and co-founder uh, of Kohana Inc. We are a home sharing platform for older adults. Uh, we recently launched a supplemental service to help increase engagement on our platform. So this is the case study to that uh, campaign. The story of me. I've assisted thousands of patients and families during the most sensitive time of their lives. After 10 years as a hospice nurse, I've been able to identify with the many challenges families face during time of grief. Most importantly, the lack of affordable long-term care options. One of my proudest accomplishments to date was opening a senior living facility and being able to directly influence the quality of life for each one of my residents. With Kohana, I hope to apply this concept on a broader scale, revolutionizing the way we provide housing and support for at-risk seniors in this country. And here's a picture of me in my first move in my first residence. Uh, here's the, this is the case study here. Uh, so what is Kohana? A home sharing platform that pairs healthcare professionals with older adults who are unable to live independently. The problem we were having was low frequency of use. Uh, we wanted to find a way to increase engagement, our value proposition and network effects. Um, the solution, a supplemental service to help seniors stay active during their home share. Um, offer two free hours of in-home activities and companionship with the first booking was our irresistible offer. So we decided to use BizHack as the 
um, way to really get this campaign going. Uh, so here are the results for the awareness campaign, which lasted seven days. Our budget, our budget was $59.63. Uh, we had 2,800 impressions. Our click-through rate was 3%. Um, we had 87 clicks. Cost per click was about 68 cents. Uh, we had 3% conversion on our forms and we had three total leads um, and we had one customer convert to a customer, which was pretty exciting. Um, and at potential revenue, customer lifetime value uh, would be uh, $1,920. Um, the cost per acquisition, $59.63 and the potential return on investment, uh, 3,000%, okay? This is our retargeting campaign results. This was three days after the original awareness campaign. Our budget for this campaign was $57.81. We had a thousand impressions. Um, we had an average of 0.66% on our click-through rate. Uh, we had seven clicks, cost per click averaged around $8.21. And we had about a 14% conversion into one lead. Okay, and here's some key findings from the entire campaign, which lasted about 10 days. Um, senior living communities must provide 12 hours a week of social and recreational services for their residents. Our first booking happened to come from a senior living home um, requesting four hours of activities. And our first booking will actually be this weekend, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, we do have an in-service set up with a provider to help to show them how to book these services as well. 64% um, of caregivers of the elderly receiving four hours of respite or activities per week after one year reported improved physical health. So we, we were able to identify that four hours a week was the go-to number um, for the majority of our clients and seems to be an ideal fit. So uh, that's how we came up with our customer lifetime value based on a four hour schedule a week. Uh, we converted the only lead we were able to communicate with via telephone, which was uh, pretty encouraging. So the only customer that we were able to actually talk to, we were able to convert. Um, so we still have three more customers to uh, connect with and potentially convert those as well. Our goal was to create more network effects for our core business model and to encourage families to sign up and try our services uh, before committing to a home sharing arrangement. Um, during this campaign, we actually did obtain two leads for our original core service uh, business model, which was pretty encouraging. And that was the overall goal of uh, this campaign as well. So here is the total results of the campaign. Uh, we spent about $117. We had 3,900 impressions, uh, 94 clicks, and we had four leads um, from this campaign in total. And one customer ultimately resulted and we had a potential revenue, revenue of $1,920 uh, $1, uh, for the year. And the cost per acquisition, uh, roughly about $117 and a potential return on investment, um, 1,500%. So um, even at her first booking, we're ROI positive, which is pretty exciting. Okay, this is my customer journey map. Um, it's pretty detailed, but I'm going to review with you the paid journey. So through the paid journey, we had a landing page um, that we that we did um, for the particular lead and our particular persona. Uh, and that landing page, we had a lead form. Um, and that lead form, we had a call to action. Uh, once they clicked that call to action, that information was sent directly to our Slack that I share with my co-founder. And we typically try to attack those leads immediately. Um, if not, or if they're undecided at the moment, we usually put them in an email campaign, a nurturing campaign, and we continue to give them advice, education, resources, until ultimately they're convinced, um, you know, that this is something that they want to try, and they're uh, they're confident in our services and our ability to um, give them the service. Okay, and after the purchase, um, depending on the persona, we usually integrate them into an email nurturing campaign. Uh, we continue to cross sell them with other additional services on the platform. Um, get testimonials, referrals, and continue to give them um, on-demand support, okay? Uh, so that's my customer journey. Um, my biggest learning, aha, uh, this semester I've learned that selling requires you to get uncomfortable uh, and personal with your audience. Uh, customers resonate with your story, and it's an important part of the sales cycle. Um, I'm, I'm traditionally um, introvert. I'm, I'm very I'm shy uh, at times, um, learning to sell and tell my story and be on social media and engage with my audience was something that I've learned. And I realized um, when these customers speak to you and they get to know your story and they resonate with your story, um, they become ultimately customers um, and they're just excited, ex excited as you are. So that was something I learned through the course. Um, the future of Kohana, uh, we want to apply the fundamentals that we've learned in BizHack to the remaining personas and core business model. Um, prior to this program, I was pretty much spraying and praying 
and hoping for the best. Now I can really take calculated risks. Uh, now I know how to identify these personas and how to really um, gain these customers' attention um, through my ads. Um, Big has, Big BizHack was a tremendous help uh, to our program. Uh, we want to continue the mentorship with the Venture Mentoring Group that we're currently with. Um, they are the organization that referred us to BizHack, uh, which was priceless. Uh, and we also want to continue to invest in marketing and product development with the new data that we now know, that we now have. So that's my activities campaign. Um, thank you guys for having me. Thank you, David. Um, I get to play Alex's role today, and I um, actually got to talk to him yesterday, and he said, oh my gosh, David, he has got the best customer journey I have ever seen in all of the cohorts. I don't know Thank if you. you remember, it was a little busy, but you executed on it flawlessly. And that is, that's the idea, is have it thought out, know where you're going, and you just prove that you can get there very easily. Um, I, I wanna echo some of the comments in the, in the chat that this is an amazing thing you're doing, um, very heartfelt and, and we all are rooting for you to be successful. And I think this is just the beginning. So I'll turn it over to Ricardo. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. David, uh, it was just such a pleasure spending some time with you and coaching you through through this course. Uh, I really love what you're doing. It's timely, it's relevant, it's needed. Uh, it's almost kind of like you get an opportunity to be a surfer on waves that's out in the ocean. You just have to know how to ride it. And you have this moment to make a, a real difference in what you're doing. Um, echoing what Cheryl says, like this is a really great customer journey, just putting down on paper. It would be hard to kind of have that in your head and sort of being able to pinpoint where the different intersections are. And so it underscores how important it is to document what it is that you do and do what you document because then this journey is really then allow you to see exactly where you're going, what, what the route you need to take, when you need to reroute. So that's pretty amazing. So thank you. Um, looking forward to, to, to more great things and keep rocking, man. And thank you, Ricardo. Our one-on-ones were truly invaluable and it really helped me in my confidence. Awesome. Guess I'm up next. All right. So yeah, I'm going to do an introduction and then Serena, you're up. Um, I just got thrown off because your hair is straight in the picture and I'm looking at you and your hair is curly. Uh, so I was like, and you have glasses on now and you didn't have glasses on there. So this is clearly a glamour shot of you. <laughs> it's false advertising. I know. Yes. <laughs> We're marketers. That's what we do. <laughs> I was like, I, who's that person who's speaking on behalf of Serena? Uh, <laughs> it's Serena. Uh, Serena. Uh, all right. This case study is from Serena Andras of Creative Chi, one of the many marketing and communications agencies that are part of the BizHack program. One of the reasons why marketing agencies and communications agencies come to BizHack is because there are two ways to make revenue through what we teach. Number one, like everybody, you can use it to attract new clients to your agency, but number two is you can upsell your existing clients with high demand digital marketing and social media advertising services. Many PR firms and brand marketing agencies and graphic designers and communications shops like Creative Chi are being asked now to step out of the box and do more around content creation and targeted advertising. And that's why we're so proud to have Serena be one of the standouts from the about one third of the businesses that go through our program. She represents the best of what we look for in agencies. Welcome Serena Andros of Creative Chi. Thank you, Dan. Welcome the, the curly hair post COVID Serena Andros. Um, all right, sharing my screen. All right, so this is me and this is my branding agency and we, um, it's strategy and visual identity for purpose-driven businesses. 
And my journey, I started off in a conventional corporation. Uh, I was there for about 12 years, actually, a media company. And I was a frustrated art director because I was using my talents um, to create sort of unworthiness and sell products that people didn't need and were not doing the earth any good. Um, I opened my own agency in 2011, and I felt like I was a flourishing creative director. And I, my a company is a certified B Corporation, so I'm very proud of that. And through that, I get to, you know, serve clients that are really creating a positive ripple effect in the world. Come COVID, and um, I lose 90% of my business. So I turned to BizHack because I have never had to market my own business. Uh, so the digital space is where we're marketing today before it was network, word of mouth, things like that. So I said, why not give this hack a try? The case study for my business, um, what we do, Creative Chi serves businesses passionate about being purpose-driven, sustainable, B corporations, eco-friendly, and those companies that are ready to really up-level their brand strategy and visual communications. The problem is that after losing 90% of my clients, um, I needed to refocus. I needed to figure out how I was going to market myself. So uh, it would be the first time that I implemented digital marketing. So that was the solution, was to implement a digital marketing plan. And so this basically runs down what we learned in BizHack. So I revisited my customer personas. I updated my customer journey and then ran that awareness video advertisement. This is the first time that I have designed a video ad for my own company. Well really for any company, but um, I actually, I'm not bad at it. Um, then we ran a, a retargeting video and the email nurture campaign, which I'm still sort of working on. Um, here's my persona that I wanna share with you guys. This is Sustainable Sue. And uh, she is an actual client of mine that I sort of am looking for more clients like this. Here are her qualities. And she has high levels of marketing comprehension and her interests as well as her usage on social media and different devices. Customer journey. So from awareness to advocacy, this is my path with her. Um, she found me in a B Corp directory, you know, found my website, emailed me, phone conversations, to I sell her a package, all the way up to she reviews my business. And I would, you know, like to, that would loop back around again, hopefully. My first video ad, I will play it for you guys. So I was really happy with that ad and it had a great playthrough rate. Um, I followed up with this um, retargeted ad, which um, my uh, coach said to go ahead and do a, a, a sort of a live video presentation. I am not 100% happy with the way this turned out and I, I will probably do a whole lot of tweaking and redo it. Um, I was uh, very happy with my lead generation form, although since those two things go together, the results were not fabulous, but it's okay. It's a learning process. So my results from my total spend, um, $139. These were the um, cost per thousand impressions. Uh, I mean, 47% through play, I think is pretty good. Uh, the engagement, so 21 clicks and three actual leads. Um, it seems expensive when I look at other people's, but the cost of my client is expensive. It's very niche. And um, getting an actual client would lead to anywhere from $5,000 to $20,000. So it's sort of expected. And uh, it takes a lot longer to sort of nurture these clients. So three new leads. So I have um, them in my email campaign. And uh, I had to create a whole lot of content which is, which is an amazing result. My aha moments. Um, social media advertising is not for the faint of heart. It is complicated and it involves a lot of cursing and crying and searching for answers. And um, as Cheryl says, Dr. Google is my best friend. I watch so many YouTube videos. It's not even funny. Um, 
And also the reality of failing fast and going back at it again from a different angle and shifting the approach quickly to test again. Um, that is definitely key t- takeaway. And the done is better than perfect. Sometimes you just have to get stuff out there and if it fails, great, do it quick, try again. What's next for Creative Chi? Make some tweaks, and do it again. Thank you. It was a great experience and there's so much knowledge and not just knowledge, but community and learning beyond the, the digital marketing space. Thank you guys. Thank you, Sabrina, how exciting. Um, so Tati's not here today, so I am bringing her well wishes for you and um, her celebration of your accomplishments. Um, like you said, uh, it, this is a long sales cycle and you know it's really admirable of your willingness to go out there and try new ways of generating and reaching your audience. So, you know, hats off to you, caps off, whatever, Um, you know, and I think the organic mindful business sector with money, this is important work and and we really admire you for selecting this niche. And the certified B Corp, that's a huge, I mean, you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, certified B Corps meet the highest standards for social and environmental performance, transparency, legal accountability. I mean, that is their mission. And so hats off to you that you not only undertake a new business, um, but you do it in a sector that is, is, you know, it's got a lot of challenges in front of it and you're meeting them and facing them very well. So um, hats off to you um, and, and uh, well wishes from Tati. She's so sorry she couldn't be here. The end. Next up is the amazing Mike O'Donnell of Box 03. And I do have to confess, oops. Next up, I'm trying to like position. Okay, there, it's on my head now. Uh, Next up is the amazing Mike O'Donnell from Box 03. And I do have to confess that Mike is going to help me sell my company in a few years. He's an investment banker who has worked with many, many startups. He teaches uh, startups at Broward College. He's been a, a mentor and a friend of mine for many years, and he'll be my investment banker one day. Uh, Bo- Mike is going to tell you about the extraordinary Box 03. One other little piece uh, about Mike O'Donnell is Mike O'Donnell introduced me to something he does with his kids, which is called Camp Dad. And I love the idea of Camp Dad because when I, I have two children and I think a lot that like if I can give an experience to my children, I want it to be like camp so that we're having fun and adventures uh, and seeing the world and exploring it together. You know, in some ways, BizHack is like camp marketing where we get together, we roast some marshmallows and we make some money through online lead gen. With uh, Mike, it's a pleasure to have you here and I look forward to you selling my company one day. Thank you, Dan, for that very, very kind um, introduction. Let me share my screen here. Good. Can everybody see my screen? Can everybody hear me okay? Thumbs up. Good. All right. Thanks a lot, Dan. So I'm Mike O'Donnell, and I've been working with uh, Marvin Cornest on a project that we call Box 03. Oops. There we go. So I work, as Dan said, uh, with a lot of startup accelerators, and my superpower is helping them to create a truly remarkable product and also how to scale their business. I met Marvin, he came into the accelerator. He told me that uh, he had had packages stolen off his doorstep by porch pirates, kind of pissed him off. He wanted to create a box that would lock uh, to protect his packages. I thought it was an interesting market. It's a big market, everybody gets packages. About 11 million were stolen off of people's doorsteps last year. But my problem with with Marvin and what I talked to him about was his idea, his concept was not all that remarkable. There are there are other uh, lock boxes on the market, like the one you see on the screen, and his wasn't all that different. Then COVID hit. Everyone I knew was disinfecting their packages. The CDC was warning that germs can piggyback into your house in those packages. And so I said, Marvin, 
I suggested if you can add a disinfecting technology so that the box both protected and disinfected, you might have something remarkable. You could recreate the category. Do you know anybody that knows anything about disinfecting technologies? And he goes, I do. Worked with this guy, Kaloy, in the Philippines many years ago. And he is an expert in ozone technology. And he's out using ozone to disinfect entire office complexes. So we got Kaloy on the phone and said, hey, can you put ozone in a box? And he said, yes, I can put O3 in a box. O3 being the chemical formula for ozone. And right there, I thought to myself, box O3, that has the potential of being a global brand. So I called my good friend, Anthony Phils, who's a world-class designer. I asked him if he could create a brand identity for box O3 and also design us a beautiful box, something people would love to have on their doorstep. And he said, of course I can, that's what I do. And we were able with his designs to create a working functioning prototype. We tested it in a lab with an actual COVID culture and indeed it worked great. So then we built a mobile application to control the box. And now having proof of concept, we figured how best to launch this. Kickstarter or Indiegogo, crowdfunding would be a good way to introduce this. And that's where we got stuck. As much as I know about business and marketing, I'm no expert in digital marketing, especially the latest techniques. So I said, who do I know that knows something about digital marketing? Dan and the folks at BizHack, and I know Dan must know what he's talking about because his shirt matches his logo and that's just awesome marketing. So that's how I got here. And that's how I got to be part of this wonderful experience that we call the Thrive Tribe. So our case study is quite simple. We needed to build a pre-campaign audience and we had no funnel. Anyone who knows anything about marketing will recognize this funnel. It's been used for decades and we had none of it. So our solution was to enter this program, learn about social media advertising, learn about how to build a following on Facebook, learn how to capture leads, and then how to develop a list of backers. We did just that. And these were some of our insights from taking this course. We learned how to test different audiences with different messages, different value propositions. One audience, uh, we called them the protectors, male homeowners that got at least one package. And we only tested the protect, anti-theft um, attributes of the box. We also tested female homeowners separately because they're typically the caregivers of the house who got at least one package uh, a week. And um, that those ads did not perform as well. And what we learned was the, the, the protectors were very interested because no education is needed. Everybody knows what a lockbox is. Delivery guy comes up, the box opens, package goes in, it locks, it's good. But when you're talking about disinfecting, the females were like, hmm, I'm not sure about this ozone thing. I'm, I, you know, I'm not sure if it's safe. I'm not sure if it's effective. Is it a gimmick? And so what we realized by doing these tests were that our future ads, we're going to have to provide an education component. The other thing that we learned is, is uh, we learned how to test different messages and different images within our ads. And so we tested color preferences of the box. Very fascinating results. Half the, half the men saw the black box, half saw the silver. Half the women saw the black box, half saw the silver. And the black box outperformed the silver box three to one, particularly very, very popular among the male um, uh, people that we targeted. And so that's going to help drive our product development. So here's our results. You can see on the right, these were the assignments that uh, were given to us in this course. And they taught us how to do each of these. We ran video awareness ads. We ran a lead gen ad, a retargeting ad. And we also learned how to boost some of our posts. We invested $150. We were able to reach 35,000 people approximately at a cost of $4.30 per thousand. 254 clicked and liked our page at a cost of 59 cents per click. We generated 30 leads people who gave us their name and email address and said, yes, contact me when you launch. What that's going to translate into in terms of sales, we don't know yet because we're not quite launched, but you can see our conversion rate down here. I won't bore you with all that, but we're quite pleased with it. So here's the conclusion from what we learned taking this program and doing these tests uh, and also doing some other tests. If we invest $10,000, we'll be able to reach 200,000 highly targeted prospective backers. 1% of those 
will be engaged enough to come and visit our campaign page. And 10% of those will back us and buy the box at 249 and we'll reach our campaign goal of generating $50,000. So you can see the metrics on the right. <clears throat> It'll cost us about five cents per reach, $5 per click, $50 to acquire a customer, delivering us a 400% ROI. A lot of nice um, ahas in this program. We learned how to do lookalike audiences. If you don't know what that is, I didn't either. Essentially, everyone who's engaged with your ad, Facebook will say, I can deliver you another 200,000 people that are just like them, that behave like them, act like them, think like them. That's a wonderful way to extend your ad budget. We learned about deep audience insights and, um, and targeting tools. We did A-B testing, learned how to test different headlines and images. Any of you who have done marketing in the past, do you remember what A-B marketing used to be like? It would take weeks or months to figure out which ads worked and which didn't. They taught us in this course, you can do that in minutes or hours. It's a really a wonderful outcome. And then we also learned how to justify our ROI uh, and, our, and our spend. So that's it. What's next for us? We're going to launch the campaign. We're going to attract some backers, some, some pre-orders, we hope. That will allow us to raise some investment capital, which I'm also very good at, and manufacture and ship the product. Finally, I do want to uh, give a shout out to Marvin, who was the inspiration for this project. He works 12 hour shifts at Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami. He's on the front lines of COVID. He sources their personal protection equipment. And yesterday he was one of the first Americans to receive the vaccine so that he can stay healthy and he can, anybody who's falling victim to it, he can help them get well. So thank you very much for listening to our story. Well. Thank you very much, um, Mike. It, it was really, I, I mean, I talked to Alex and we both agree. This is an amazing business that has a perfect fit in social media advertising. The ability, ability for you to scale up internationally is it's just so powerful. Um, we actually think you've got a billion dollar business here and that you should probably hire all of us uh, after you go on Shark Tank. That's, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Regardless. Consider it done. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mike, for the opportunity to uh, to spend a little time with you and workshop through this. Uh, Marvin is really awesome. Um, just so everyone knows, Mike is also uh, my coach. We participated in the um, in this in the incubated program, um, the acceleration program with Marvin, and so Mike has been really awesome. Um, and I felt really honored to just sort of hang out with him for a couple hours to talk through talk through the, uh, the, the, the campaign. So it's, it's a product that I believe in. I think it has a lot of potential, as you know, and I also have an ambition to have you help me sell my company too, like Dan. So you actually have two of us and I'll make a plug for everyone else who is here. If you want to sell your company, you should reach out to Mike because he's also very good at that. But so congratulations. And I look forward to hearing more about the, um, about the box. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you. You're a great coach. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, I feel like we're pitching you, Mike. <laughs> Anybody else want a job with Mike? Anybody? Raise hands, everybody. Yeah, okay, quite a few. All right, let's stand in line. Mike, how do we send you our resume? How do we invest? How do we market your Box 03? No, but good for you. You, you taught us how to do it, so hopefully you'll be hearing a lot more about it. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Michael Pearson of the Alliance for Aging is someone who comes to us from a place that's very close to my heart. My wife is the CEO of a nonprofit, and I spent most of my career while a journalist at NPR, a nonprofit. And we at BizHack are very proud to serve nonprofits. We've had dozens run through our program to teach them the very best of what digital marketing has to offer for the nonprofit world. And Michael Pearson is the prototype of who we are looking for in a nonprofit marketer, someone who is fearless and willing to take risks in service of his target community, in this case, the Aging. The Alliance for Aging is an organization that funds many other aging organizations. 
And so they are essentially a pass-through organization that helps support seniors like the Children's Trust supports children. So there are dozens of organizations that Mike is in support of, but Mike at the bottom is really about serving seniors, one of the most endangered populations due to this coronavirus. And so it's with deep gratitude and respect for the work that you do that I welcome Michael Pearson, digital marketer extraordinaire <laughs> and do-gooder from the Alliance for Aging. Thank you very much, Dan. Very, very happy to be here and happy to tell a little bit about what we did in our time as the Thrive Tribe. So my name is Michael Mercury, and I'm gonna just go ahead and load this presentation real quick. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about our new donor campaign for the Alliance for Aging. But before I do that, I wanna tell you about a time when I was 10 years old. I went on a 100 mile march with my dad. Uh, we went from the Liberty Bell to the United Nations building. And I remember so vividly, so many memories from sleeping in this beautiful St. John's Cathedral to walking alongside my new friend, Oscar, who didn't have shoes the entire way. But more than any one of those specific memories, I recall, and I'm getting goosebumps right now just thinking about it, being with my dad and looking around and seeing all of these people that don't look like me, that I've never met before, united in our cause, chanting, the people united will never be divided. Unfortunately, um, five years later and many marches later, um, my father very suddenly passed away. And in um, figuring out, in part of the healing process and in figuring out how to honor him and honor my family's legacy, I became closer with my grandparents. I learned how wonderful it is to have grandparents close to you in your home. I uh, continued to volunteer. I continued to go on marches and I continued to feel this wonderful feeling every time of working with a diverse group on a single cause. So that brings us to today. Um, the Alliance for Aging, like Dan said, is the largest funder of aging services here in Miami-Dade and Monroe counties. Unfortunately, un aging services are incredibly underfunded. And when you look at the demographics, the people over the age of 65 now outnumber children and people over the age of 85 are the fastest growing demographic in the county. So while we're underfunded now, it's only gonna get worse. So what this tells us is the Alliance needs to find new revenue. And interestingly, the Alliance is an organization that has never really fundraised. We've relied on federal and state grants almost entirely. So we set out with BizHack to find Philomena the philanthropist. Philomena is someone who lives in Miami-Dade or Monroe, tends to be a woman and likes uh, NPR. So she's used to being asked for money. And she also likes AARP. So there's an interest in older adult services. Part of the BizHack model, as you probably all know, is the irresistible offer. With nonprofits, we can't offer a discount or a sale, but what we could do and what we did was use these third-party days uh, to create some urgency. So we had Give Miami Day and we had Giving Tuesday. Those two things combined with the unmet need created an irresistible offer. Another one of our challenges here was with the Facebook Audience Network, and I'm gonna show you a little bit about that in a minute, but Facebook Audience Network basically artificially increases the number of through plays that, you, that I had uh, because for example, you have to watch 15 seconds of an ad to get to your next game. That's what the Facebook audience network would be. All of my ads were under 15 seconds. And then we also learned that you cannot use the folks in the Facebook audience network when creating your next audience. But here's what it looks like. $110 spent, a little over 5,300 impressions and 2,400 through plays for a approximately 46% of through plays. Well, when you look at that a little bit closer, my first ad, which ran on the Facebook Audience Network, had 72% through play. When I turned off Facebook Audience Network, it dropped down below 8%. So that shows me that I have a lot to do to really still create a thumb-stopping video. That said, we did get 54 clicks, and out of that, we got six new donors totaling $515, which is a 4.7 times return on investment, which is amazing. Some of the things that we learned are ahas here you have to roll with the punches. Facebook is gonna look different today than it did yesterday and tomorrow it's gonna to be completely different. So, uh, you know, not everything is gonna to go to plan. And in that sense, really biz hack and digital marketing are microcosms for life. But specifically with biz hack, I mean, we learned a lot. I had never run a video ad before. I had never used Facebook audience tools. A lot of these things were brand new. And of course the biggest aha was, will this work for a nonprofit to find new donors? It seems like the answer might be yes, and it's certainly worth exploring. 
So in conclusion, some of the things that we have to do, I, we need to work on our customer journey. We have to create some content to make a more irresistible offer so we don't have to rely on urgency of th some of these third party days. And we kind of want to run this whole process again now that we know what we know about the Facebook audience network. So if you uh, love your grandparents or you care about older adults here in Miami-Dade County, please do visit allianceforaging.org. And if you want, go ahead and click that donate button in the top right. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Michael. Um, I think your dad would be really proud of you. And Thank it's you. Um, not only a very touching story, but uh, exciting results. I mean, you know, who, who, yes. who would have thunk, right? Who would have thunk um, it? Yeah. So, um, you know, I think the thing that really, you know, in working with you as your coach, you are an incredibly quick learner you grasp the concepts and then you ran with them. And, and I think maybe the only other person that would even come close to you is Serena, but you really are the master of Dr. Dr. Google um, <laughs> and, and what you learned about the audience network and, and, and the workarounds and, and so on. I mean, you know, really amazing at how quickly you learn, grasp and run with uh, the things that you learned. So, Again, I do think dad would be proud and I am as well. And it means a lot to me. To Thank you, Cheryl. Work with you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And it is wonderful to have coaching time with you. And it's wonderful to work with everyone here at the Thrive Tribe. We had a really wonderful time. So thank you. Sorry, just trying to share my screen. Michael, that was a beautiful presentation. And, uh, I really love what Cheryl said about your dad. I think it's true. All right. So um, one of the things that we pride ourselves on at BizHack is giving our participants an ungodly number of surveys. And the reason why we do this is because we like to torture. No, uh, it's because we are tracking your progress minute by minute, week by week through the program. And one of the things that we want to share with you and one of the benefits that you're going to derive is you're now going to get a learning journey report individualized to each of your specific uh, journeys. We're going to share some of that overall data now with you. And one of the most exciting findings that we had was the dramatic increase in self-reported knowledge that happened from the beginning of the semester until the end. And you can see that you guys were in that blue place uh, at the beginning of the semester with an average knowledge of two and three on main topics and learning objectives of this course. And you can see how quickly you doubled and tripled your knowledge and your confidence about your knowledge. We're not quite there on every point. Seven is the, is the breaking point for basic mastery, uh, but we are nearly there on almost all of the topics that we wanted to get you. So you still have a little bit of work to do, but you can see that from, from storytelling to the biz hack mentality, you guys have really learned and own this course. And congratulations for all of your hard work. This is a manifestation of that. So bravo. Now I want to introduce another set of colleagues who have done amazing work in the same five weeks, but with a heck of a lot less support. So the Village of Pinecrest got a CARES Act uh, federal grant to allow us to train storefronts and home-based businesses in the Village of Pinecrest, which is a suburb of Miami. And the, we've struggled to figure out ways visually to c express the volume of people who participated in this. Pinecrest was generous enough to allow us to market this to the community as a free offering. And then we did one-on-one -on -one coaching with the businesses that, uh, small, small group and one-on-one -on -one coaching with the businesses you're about to meet. And we thought that maybe a couple dozen or a hundred other people 1,050 people from around the world enrolled in this course that was really intended for the 350 businesses in Pinecrest. And it was such a gift to the community and to the small businesses everywhere that Pinecrest has given. And this is just a small sampling of the 122 businesses 
that attended all five hours of live instruction. And we are so proud to have these amazing businesses. You know, Atlantic Broadband is it kind of jumped out at me because they're my internet provider. But just we've touched so many businesses through this program and we're very, very proud uh, of the work that we've done. I want to introduce our first speaker uh, from that group. This is Zanat Siman of Firefly Bridge, which is an organizing service. You hire her to help you get organized. And by the looks of everything underneath my desk, I could use your help. Uh, Zanat was a standout in the small group coaching that we got that we that was included in part of the grant. And she's a very good example of a home based business, somebody that is not only a business owner in Pinecrest, but a resident as well. Welcome, Zanat. Thanks, Dan. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks again for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to share my screen. There we go. So um, I'm Zenit Siman, I'm a professional organizer and I'm the owner of Firefly Bridge Organizing Services in Pinecrest, as Dan mentioned. And I help people organize and transform their homes into the calm and beautiful spaces that they've been looking for so that they can enjoy their homes again and really spend time doing what's most important to them. Now until this point, my growth has been by word of mouth. I've had you know, minimal online presence um, when I was very young, my family lived very modestly. We really didn't have a lot. We spent most of our time with family and friends. And I feel like we really enjoyed our time like that rather than worrying about what we had. And once uh, we moved to North America, I developed the thinking that success was synonymous with, uh, with what I owned. And once I had kids of my own, I became, I felt burdened by all the stuff that we had accumulated. It really affected my sleep, my mood, and the time that we spent with, um, that I spent with my family and my loved ones. When I started organizing and reducing what I owned, um, I really started enjoying my life again. So I'm ZC Man, and I started Firefly Bridge Organizing because I wanted to uh, show up for other people who were going through the same thing. And I made it my mission to teach others how to simplify and organize themselves, just like I did, so that they can also live an unburdened and joy-filled life. Um, in March of this year, I, the pandemic made me completely stop in-home organizing. I immediately pivoted online and began doing more virtual organizing because 50% of my current client base feared in-home services and honestly, so did I. I did gain some out-of-state virtual clients by word of mouth and through friends and through networking. My objective was to build local awareness though, online for both in-person and virtual services. So I can create a robust client base from this point forward. So the email from BizHack came through at just the right moment for me. The, over these past five weeks where I've had, you know, umpteen aha moments, these are the ones I'm gonna focus on. I really learned why my story is important, how it helped me to connect and build trust with my potential clients. Uh, why I needed to understand the details of my ideal customer persona for targeting and messaging, the possibilities with Facebook ads. As I mentioned, I wasn't uh, online at all. And so this has opened a whole new window for me. The tools that I could use and the need to understand my customer's journey and what to do at each touch point. So the class also helped me to create my offer. And you know, I will encourage all of you to get organized for 2021 with a free one hour virtual organizing session You'll see immediate res results after that hour, and I will give you my comprehensive closet organizing guide so you can get started right away with organizing. Um, I also did create my first campaign, and it was scary, but uh, I created my audience here. You'll see the, the, the details. I use the minimalist actually as my, as my bubba. And the ad has only been running for seven days. I spent $65, and I'll just play it for you here. Oop, if I could. Or maybe I can't. Let me continue though. So the lead potential here for me, I spent $65. Um, it was a three hour, for, in terms of leads, typically what I would do is a three hour service. And it, the potential here is about $180. Over a lifetime value for each customer, four sessions, $1,020. And really I focus a lot on referrals. So here are the numbers, impressions, the reach. And I did get three leads. So. To me that, you know, it, it, 
it's a bit of a success, but I know there's a lot more work to do. So what's next for me is to review and revise the Facebook ad to update the messaging on my website now that I understand better who my ideal uh, person, my client persona is to complete my customer's journey and to use these learnings to update my offer, the future ads and my social media messaging. And of course, to stay in touch and continue to support my uh, BizHack group. So to Dan Ricardo and the entire BizHack team, my own group members and the Village of Pinecrest, um, these, you guys have been so generous and supportive and I've gained immediate value from each and every session with you. So a big thank you to you all. Well, and thank you, uh, thank you, Sina. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to, um, to to be the coach for for the the group that Sina was in, and um, she is uh, extraordinary. She is a real organizer, and so you should take her up on her offer. Um, she can certainly help to declutter things, uh, but really great job. I think it's it's a great business. I I love the idea. I love how you adapt uh, and quickly just transition from. Um, what's what couldn't be done to what's now sort of um uh, possible with uh, virtual uh, uh organizing sessions and so forth running your first ad like that's that's just so amazing like you know i'm sure the the idea that you run your first ad and you see that you can generate leads from just the first ad might not be the experience for everyone but that feeling you get um must be uh um, really really overjoyed and so I really congratulate you on behalf of uh, the rest of the group as well for doing such a good job. Keep it up, keep rocking. Thank you so much, yeah, I will. <laughs> awesome. We can hear you then. It's with particular joy that I introduce Cristobal Giddy of Machido Karate Miami. And I've had a chance to get to know Cristobal. I feel, uh, Cristobal, like you and I are brothers from another mother. Uh, I so admire everything that you do to bring not only the physical experience of karate, but the mindset of karate to your students and to children. I wish I just lived a little bit closer to you. I would bring my son when he's of age to become a karate master. But I want you to know that um, what you're trying to do right now, which is really hard, which is he's trying to transform his business, which his, whose revenue has been cut by 65%, not only into a business that's safe during COVID. He's invested thousands of dollars in high-tech equipment, uh, updated ventilation systems, infrared uh, sanitizing equipment, and a indoor-outdoor structure so that you, they can be indoors uh, but still practice karate safely. But he's also investing in hiring and training a whole new generation of instructors to take what was his father's original idea as an immigrant in this country from Chile and turn it into a huge business. And I wish you from the bottom of my heart, the greatest success imaginable. And I hope everyone from Pinecrest who knows a little boy or a dad or even a little girl who wants to learn the discipline of body and mind that karate brings, please support the amazing Machido Karate Miami and the incomparable Cristobal Giddy. Hi, Dan. Thank you so much. That's, you're too kind. I really... Um... I do feel that we are brothers from another because of the way you approach things and your, the attitude that you actually are able to pull from me. You are, you really are someone that can take the best out of somebody and have them presented to themselves. I mean, you've impressed me with how much I can do now. So thank you. Um, uh, let me begin my presentation. It's here. Can everybody see? Can everyone see? Yes? Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. 
And, and by the way, Cristobal is an extremely skilled karate master who could chop you in half if he wanted to. <laughs> but making a PowerPoint presentation is probably the hardest thing we've ever asked him to do. So I have not done one of these for over a decade. So I, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm, so there's a little share button at the I bottom. I got it. I'm back on. Okay, I figured it. There we are. Is that better now? Yeah. And then just, um, I think there's a, yeah, there it got is. it. Excellent. Break a leg. Break a leg, just not literally. Okay, all right. We'll keep those intact. So, uh, Machida Karate Miami. Uh, we are a premier martial arts center in the heart of Pinecrest. I am Sensei Cristobal Giri. I learned karate beginning at the age of four from my father. He was a well-known architect in Santiago, Chile. But when we moved, he had to start over. And he began his own uh, martial arts academy here as he did in Chile in 1985 and established the Pinecrest Academy in 1992, right after Hurricane Andrew. In that time, I was in high school and I didn't have uh, much going on, but I found my way into technology until the day um, I received a call from my father that he was very sick, dying from lung cancer and was asking me to continue the legacy of the Academy. And I was 28 then pretty green so for the past two decades i've run his art studio his art martial arts studio in pinecrest with the same values and trying to add modern relevance uh, so that they can uh, take advantage of the very many benefits of martial arts training at our academy we are very we have our client very well defined so what we have is for ages four to six years old is little dragons program seven to eight ages seven and eleven is our young samurai and 12 to 14 is our teen tigers this is our youth program set and we for the adults we have adult beginners and adult advanced uh, beginners learn attributes and fundamental self-defense techniques while the advanced would receive a uh, strategy and self-defense real life self-defense application training Pre-COVID situation, well, I had made the decision before to, uh, you know, become more capable in my business. And so I started learning Adobe Suite and eventually found that Google AdWords and Google My Business were very powerful. But I wasn't leveraging Instagram as, and Facebook as much as I should have. Very reliant on word of mouth, which left me like just a piece of paper in the wind, you know. And over I was overwhelmed with teaching classes. I, I had very little bandwidth, so um, I couldn't really muster the energy to get everything else up other than beyond my Squarespace website and use my client list more. So quarantine hit, panic, nerves went off, you know. And what did, what did we do? Well, I thought I have two chances. I either make it or break it here. So I'm going to double down on everything. I'm going to invest in infrastructure and just become loud. I had a mentor who runs a small um, a, a insurance business that is growing nicely. And he told me, he said, look, massive action. You need massive action. So I went and I purchased a new sign, which was in the, in the budget to begin with. Um, and I began certifying new instructors in the very same way that I learned, I received my training from the Machida family in California. Of course, we uh, are compliant with all requirements by, um, by the municipality, and we try and go far beyond that. We installed a new air conditioning system to help our existing one so that we can open the doors and keep the temperature in here down nice and cool and fresh while adding ventilation. We also installed a, a UV system in our return and uh, have disinfecting uh, routines, sanitation stations. Uh, but I think what most people have enjoyed is the boutique aspect of our, um, our personal attention of our academy. So uh, a scheduling system has been uh, very successful, actually. People like to know how many people will be in class. And, um, and that's, a, that's a great uh, peace of mind for parents. So new year, new me marketing strategy uh, is for me to complete my funnel. I want to have a nice, strong funnel. My Dan said, it doesn't matter what you think. 
So I'm going to start using LinkedIn and Yelp. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm also, I, we've started a YouTube channel. We're becoming heavier with Instagram and Facebook ads. Of course, Google My Business is at the top of our list. TikTok, we don't know exactly how, but I think I'm going to leverage the, the know-how and the energy of my young, young students to help me with that. Um, all of these will, of course, be aiming towards our Machida Karate website, which is machidamiami.com. And here's our QR. Uh, irresistible offer bringing them to the website would be a free private session with me. And I take advantage of that. It's not too much to give because I give them one-on-one -on -one attention with all of my experience. I highlight the program and illustrate the value which is a great opportunity. The turnover rate at that point is very high. So if I can get them in here and they and I make a connection, they feel at home and they trust me and they, and they join. But um, what we really wanna do is make sure we build that customer list, get the marketing goal, the email and phone number so that we can repeat the exposure to the customers that are already reached out to us. The messages that we're using are, um, we're promoting health through martial arts, you know? We communicate uh, by email and, and uh, the outlets we just outlined. And we use, we send the message of the five keys to a healthy life come, that comes from uh, a traditional book that the samurai used to consult. And it highlights rational nutrition, sensible exercise, efficient rest, proper hygiene, and a positive attitude for a healthy life. Um, like Dan, I have not began this, but we got to start making videos fast and frequent. This is that saying that we are, you know, showing our environment and showing everybody that we are open, safe, and ready to serve the community. Okay, hang on. There we go. Now, also, we are doubling down on grassroots marketing. We've made friends through this course with Julie Jeffries and her company, which is wonderful. It goes right along with ours, is Not Your Mama's Vegetables. So Julie is, she has very many programs that, uh, educational programs to help um, to promote healthy living. And we are in the works for something along the lines of Healthy Kids Program. Um, also, we are taking advantage of our association for endorsements. We happen to be associated with very well-known martial artists. And here is a video of our, um, of our promotion. We're not quite able to hear it, but I think we get the idea. Okay, excellent. So that's the idea behind that. And it gets, uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the audio right on this, but um, that's something that we can leverage right away and get out into our clients. But um, so that is it. And so thank you very much. I appreciate everything you've done for me, Dan. Yoel, you're fantastic, brother. Thank you so much. I feel so confident going into the new year. I don't know, Yoel, if you're on, uh, but if you are and you wanted to say a word, uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm here. Perfect. Please do. Chris, well, first of all, congratulations, brother. You did amazing. Um, if you guys didn't notice, this presentation was a little bit different than the others, and that's because this course was more focused on the fundamentals and not necessarily creating an ads like, like you all did. Uh, but the one thing I do want to say about um, a Chris Ball is that he he's not in denial, right? So he knows his business was at a point that it needed help. And as business owners, a lot of times we don't take advice very good. We don't take a criticism very well, but he was very open. And that's what I loved about him. He's ready to make a change for his business. And I think that's going to, uh, it's just going to show in 2021. He's going to do great things. Congratulations, man. Thank you very much, Joel. I, I really appreciate it. You know, this course has a lot of meat to it. And um, I believe I'm just getting into the, the into the. Definitely are. 
one of the reasons why I loved working with you is because honestly, more than skills, we teach a mindset. That's the idea behind the biz hacker mentality. And what's so beautiful is I think you probably would say the same thing, you know, wax on, wax off. It's not about cleaning a car or motions with your physical body. It's about a certain mental discipline. If you would, would you just share a reflection on the digital marketing mentality, the biz hacker mentality and what you learned with your karate background about the mindset of a marketer? Well, the mindset of a marketer, I, I believe, is um, it takes courage, guys. It really takes courage to begin with. You have to put yourself out there. You have to make your, your first ad, Zenith. You know, that, these are things that we think we maybe aren't ready to do. But in, through BizHack, I've been able to, you know, clear my vision and see the capacity that I have and get those roadblocks out of the way. That's the main thing that, I've, that I'm working on through this. Just beautifully said. I'm glad I asked. It's my distinct pleasure to welcome Julie Jeffries of Not Your Mama's Vegetables, a home-based business in the village of Pinecrest, someone who is destined to explode because she has not marketed her business at all except for word of mouth. As you're gonna see, this is someone who started almost from scratch and made such extraordinary progress. The fact, Julie, that you've been able to take not your mama's vegetables as far as you have is a testament that anybody who knows you can say, which is you are the world's best networker. And one of the things that you've been doing as a result of this program is you've been introducing yourself to other small business owners like Cristobal and finding ways in which you, you and his work and you and their work are aligned. And so, you know, Cristobal and you are both educators of children. You educate about how to have a healthy lifestyle and therefore the work you do is really parallel. And so who would have thought, I had no, I would never have thought of that myself, but you had the vision to see that. And I do want you to know that word of mouth and face to face, human to human is marketing. You said to me when we were talking before that you're not a marketer. No, you're a fabulous marketer. We're just teaching you how to translate it into the digital space. Julie Jeffries of Not Your Mama's Vegetables. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. That's very, very kind of you. Um, I'm going to bring up my presentation here. Um, tell me if you guys can see it. Oops. Well, sorry. Uh, am I muted? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? You cannot. You cannot. Uh oh. Sorry. Great introduction and I've blown it. That's okay. So there's a button that says share screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay. and if you can. Can you see it? Nope. Okay, now? Yes, we can. All right. Good job. All right, there we go. I had it all worked out and I blew my introduction, but I'm here now and I'm ready to go. So I am Julie Jeffries. I am the founder and chief onion of Not Your Mama's Vegetables. I am a, a plant-based health coach and lifestyle expert. And my goal is to get the world to eat more vegetables. So um, I was your average corporate executive in 2013 um, and I, with an undergraduate degree and an MBA from the University of Michigan when I went in for a pair of glasses. And um, I suddenly had my world come to a screeching halt because I didn't need glasses. I actually needed radiation to the head thanks to an inoperable brain tumor that was discovered that had left me legally and supposedly permanently blind in one eye. Um, I couldn't believe what I was what I was being told. So I started doing a lot of research and um, I decided that a whole food plant based diet that is rich in 100% whole grains and free of sugar and processed foods was probably going to be a good idea for me. Um, and little did I know what was going to happen next. But um, within about three weeks, 
I, uh, of eating like this, I started to regain some of that supposedly permanent blind uh, vision loss. And um, even with a subsequent uh, diagnosis of breast cancers, just about four months after my first diagnosis, I um, kept on my path. And within a year, I had 2020 vision for the first time in my life. Um, so I decided that this needed to be my mission. This is where I could leave my impact on the world. And um, I decided that I needed to share this. So I put my studying hat on. I went to Cornell, got my plant-based nutrition certification, and I opened Not Your Mama's Vegetables. So um, I do personalized health coaching. Um, I do group plant-rich lifestyle coaching, uh, corporate employee programs, and I also offer public and motivational speaking. Now, my challenge was actually um, in my marketing strategy, and I've just heard two of my fellow Pinecrest residents talk about the same thing. We didn't have a marketing strategy because we were working really on word of mouth. My classes were full all the time, and um, I, had, I had lots of private clients, lots of group classes, and I was doing what I thought was great, and I was having fun doing it. But um, obviously, COVID-19 brought everything crashing down because um, everything that I do, I require to be in person. I'm a, pers a people person, and um, that really exposed the weaknesses in that um, marketing strategy or lack thereof. I didn't have a website. I didn't have a mailing list to drive people to my coaching. My Instagram actually wasn't attracting the right people. And I had backed off on building a lot of these partnerships that Dan has been talking about, um, which was because I didn't have enough time to deal with um, the work. So um, in actual fact, I, um, I did launch my website. I did it myself. Um, and it is nowhere near perfect, but a bad website is way better than no website any day of the week. So people really needed to be able to connect with me and relate to me. And I needed to be able to um, have a place where I could communicate to people what I do and that they could understand what my core business is. So even though I launched it under pressure to seem more legitimate for this actual class, um, it has actually been central to my um, my learning and being able to move forward with the strategies that we've learned in this five week uh, biz hack course. So um, I did implement an irresistible offer and I gave my fellow my followers what they have been asking for for quite some time, which was uh, a little booklet of some um, very healthy recipes and how to put uh, healthy food on your table. But what while people thought think they tend to think that I'm a cook. Um, and a chef, they, this opportunity allowed me to explain to them a little bit more about what I do and what I offer. So, and it also gave me the opportunity to get them to give me their emails, give me their phone numbers and, um, and their names and um, to start creating a client list. So again, it wasn't a perfect ma uh, marketing campaign, but it was better than nothing. And um, I actually did accomplish what I set out to because I had about 50 people download my book. Um, so before this course started, you can see what my Instagram page looked like. It was really focused on food. It was beautiful, at least in my mind, lots of colors. People would um, really enjoyed being there. I talked about recipes and how to, um, how to cook, but that's not my core business, right? So my core business is about coaching people and getting you um, to change your habits and your dietary habits. So I needed to get that in front of people and um, about um, uh, before I started the course, I started to move this over um, to more um, more interactive videos, and I was doing those both in Spanish and English. I am fluent in, in Spanish, but I was a little bit shy to get onto a video and share my um, my Spanish, which is a little machucado, um, if you know what that means, <laughs> um, and you know share that and make mistakes in front of people. But you know what? Making mistakes made me a real a real person to those people, and um, I actually connected with a lot more people. So um, that that imperfection in my videos and and all the mistakes that went along with me putting those up there, people have really responded to it, and um, it makes me it makes me more of a real person. So um, all of that said, what were my aha moments? It was definitely the power of the customer list because of course. 
my vision before um, as a you know as a business owner and um, coming with my my business background was that my my mailing list to, my mailing list was to keep in touch with um, my clients. But um, actually, I had to rethink that because now I understand in the digital world that I can use these to my uh, my list to actually target ads and do lookalike audiences that will get me more clients and more people on that list. And I was stressing a lot before about um, how many followers I had. I was looking constantly. Oh, did I go up? I got one more flower, follower. Yay. And um, that's really not what it's about, guys. That's actually just a feel good metric. Um, it's not about how many people are following you. It's about your conversion of those people into clients. And, um, and so that's what I am, um, you know, I'm trying to work on now is to get them into my coaching practice. And um, also, I, my another aha was to use content to attract my ideal customers. So that had to do with me actually identifying my ideal customer and um, writing it down. And I'm still working on it, but um, it's it's I'm focused more on a healthy lifestyle and less on cooking. But my biggest aha out of all of this is that I'm not alone. Um, these struggles are real amongst all of us. I've heard all of us say this today. Um, that, you know, COVID-19 hit us hard. But what I found was I found myself in isolation, not just from my friends and, and my family, but actually from my business colleagues and my clients and, and my lifeline because I was word of mouth. So how do you do word of mouth if you're not standing in front of people? Um, but what I, found, what I found out is that um, I needed a community and this really provided that community for me. And um, a little secret, uh, the week that this course started, I actually was about to go back to corporate America and give everything up. So Dan, I didn't share this with you, but um, I wanted to say thank you <laughs> to you because um, this really has motivated me and refocused my energy. Um, I'm not giving up guys. And um, I've already like, um, like Chris Dovall has said, I've reached out to a bunch of people. Um, I've got ideas on how we can co-market our services and get things going and we're gonna make this work guys. So my next steps, obviously build up my list of potential customers, um, launch a new start, start the year right campaign. Uh, I sent my, my very first ad over to Dan for him to take a look at last night. I did put it up on my Facebook page, but I haven't launched it as an ad yet because I still need to do a little bit of work behind the scenes, but it's almost there. And that's all thanks to this program. Um, I'm learning to better identify and serve my ideal target audience and forget about the noise behind me, stay focused. And um, like I just said, I'm meeting with people around town and virtually um, no matter where you are, I am willing to talk to you about how we can work together and push business to, um, to both of our, our, um, both of our businesses. And, um, I set a budget I'm going to, for marketing, I'm going to use it this time. And finally I am going, I'm planning on outsourcing a lot of these functions that are outside of my core competencies that just take away from my ability to get my, get my work done and move this forward. So again, Dan and all of the BizHack uh, team members, Lilia, Raphael, everyone that's helped me, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it's been very um, enlightening, very, um, I'm a little emotional, <laughs> sorry. Um, very enlightening, very helpful um, and energizing for me. I wanna thank also the, the Village of Pinecrest, my hometown all of my council members and whoever came up with this awesome idea to provide this through that CARES Act, fantastic way to go about this. I really appreciate it. And of course, all of you guys, because you have given me so many ideas and so much energy and just that strength to know that I'm not, see, I'm not sitting here, I'm not behind the ball, I'm riding the wave with everyone else and I'm not drowning as much as I thought I was. So. My last bit of learning for all of you, I learned this in this course uh, during this time period, this QR code, put your photo app over it, your camera, and it will click, it'll actually take you right to whatever is uh, linked to that QR code. I don't know if some of you might not know it because it took me a while to figure it out, but there you go. That's my vulner vulnerability for the afternoon. And uh, that's it for me, guys. Thanks so much.
What I love about Julie Jeffries is she always does something called burying the lead, which means leaving the most important thing till the end. And I'm so glad you're sticking with this. We need not your mama's vegetables. So how to find customers online had their own learning journey. These were different learning objectives. And you can see that while they didn't have the same dramatic increases of the full biz hack experience, they had significant learnings. And they also took a digital marketing test at the beginning and at the end and saw an 11% increase in their scores. This is good. This is great. And the point I want to make here is there's a lot of work that you need to do to understand and master digital. And the folks in the Digital Marketers Edge have put in that work. The folks in How to Find Customers Online have begun to put in that work. And you can see in the same five to six week period, the dramatic learning uh, jumps that the Digital Marketers Edge cohort took, not to minimize the Pinecrest course, but to emphasize that you guys are really at the beginning of a learning journey and their test was way, way harder. We're going to raffle off a few more gifts. Uh, we have a complimentary 45 minute brand purpose clarity consultation with the amazing Serena and the winner is Elizabeth Borno. Congratulations, Elizabeth. We spoke yesterday. <laughs> we have uh, from seller international realty money towards the closing cost when you buy and sell with uh, Macula Paul, and the winner is? Belinda Barrientos. And we have two hours of in-home activity services with David Phillip of Kohana, and the winner is? Elisa Walton. Congratulations, guys. We're gonna stop now and take a class photo, and then we're gonna do some, uh, uh, have, have a little bit of fun with uh, so the graduation ceremony itself and then we'll have the biz hacker award and I'll let you on to your day so uh, Lilia you're gonna take the photo um, I think our tradition is we do a straight and then we do a silly so you'll let us know first step uh, stop sharing your screen so I can see everyone on the grid absolutely we'll do in a sec as you know guys we have 80 participants so we have like several pages uh, of, of participants that I need to take the picture. So try, close your eyes now and open them when I tell you to do so. So, because I don't want anybody to have this. Just leave them open. <laughs> so I have four pages. So I'll go first one with the normal one. Smile, open your eyes, three. The knees don't move. Yeah. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm gonna move to the next one. If you don't know where you are. Oh, Alex is here. Hi, Alex. Hi, three, two, one. Okay, two more to go. Uh, okay, turn on your camera so you're able to. Three, two, one. Okay, people connected. Great. Three, two, one. Okay, so now the crazy one. Okay, so strike a pose. Be funny. Smile, you made it. Okay, so three, two, one. Dan, that's not funny enough. <laughs> okay, moving to the next slide. Strike a pose. Three, two, one. Two more. Wake up, open your eyes, open your camera. Three, two, one. And this was worse than prom oh my god you did a great job Lilia thank you um, I want to welcome uh, the teaching team um, and uh, Alex de Carvalho do you happen to be there and able to talk <clears throat> yes I'm here actually and I have until 2.15, I have five minutes, so I need to log off real quick. Your, your timing is impeccable. Uh, so you were the lead instructor of the Digital Marketers Edge. You actually sent me a really lovely video, but you have two minutes. I know you want to send a welcome to the group. Uh, please share your uh, reflections. Okay, thank you, Dan. I feel like on the spot because I did about 10 takes of that video to get it right. <laughs> so now I have to ad lib. But really, um, you know, I just wanted to 
acknowledge all of you and the incredible work that you did. I know how hard you worked. I know how intense the course is. It goes quickly. And uh, so I know how hard that is. And I want to acknowledge the incredible work you did. And what a pleasure it was to be with you, collaborate, teach. Um, you were such a wonderful uh, cohort. Uh, I, I had a couple of serious things to say. One was that the consumer has changed, right? Because of the lockdown, people have been stuck at home. They've been looking at the way they spend their time and their money. And obviously, they're spending their time and money online now. That's a new reality for everybody. And for your businesses, you need to adapt. That's the first serious thing. The second serious thing is Facebook changes all the time, as we saw during class. You have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to uh, see what's happening, try new things, and be ready for things to change and adapt your marketing as things change. Sorry. And the last thing I wanted to say is I acknowledge how um, nice it is and has been to, you know, a few times a week, log in, have a group of people there, you know, 40 people. Um, you know, it's been important for my own <clears throat> mental health as I've been locked in myself to be able to come in and check in. Uh, and, and um, you know, it's just been a wonderful experience. So I want to thank the teaching team. The coaches are all so, so competent, so nice. Lilia, thank you for keeping everything together. Couldn't do it without you. And then I wanted to acknowledge you for creating BizHack, for creating the opportunity for all of us to learn and to teach. It's a wonderful community. Congrats to the job and work you are doing. And thank you for the work you're doing. And so thank you, everybody. And I need to log off now. So thank you, Dan. This was unexpected. Yeah, this was perfect, like just perfect. And uh, do you want to just introduce your marketing coaches quickly and then before you go, or you would, would you prefer for me to do it? Well, I, you know, I can name them uh, all off. You know, there's uh, Cheryl Cattell and Rick, uh, Ricardo Barris and Nathan Kruger and Tatiana McDaniel. Absolutely. Um, and uh, we also, for the... Uh, Pinecrest program. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for coming uh, during your break. Uh, you. We also had lead in, uh, lead marketing coach Gabriel Velez. Ricardo also was working with us. Rafael Savino and Yoel Gutierrez. And um, I asked each of the coaches to reflect on this just messed up year and kind of give me their um, take on what they've learned this year personally and professionally. Uh, and I just wanted to share some of their reflections uh, before we go into the graduation ceremony. Um, Cheryl said, uh, at the end of 2020, I appreciate everything I have. I'm creating a new way of making a living that feeds my soul. And without the events of 2020, I would have stayed in a job I didn't love. Tati wrote, my biggest professional aha is that you can never stop learning, especially when it comes to digital marketing, since they're constantly changing the platform and on a personal level to make your home your sanctuary. Nathan said that professionally in pest control service, which is the company he runs, we're always evolving. The only constant is change. He also said on a personal level, I've consumed my life with my business and now I'm realizing that I need to balance my life towards my family. Gabriel said, while it's been challenging to start a company during this time, it's been so rewarding knowing that your products are making people's lives better. <laughs> Yoel said, I don't know it all, but I am a problem solver and will figure out a way. Raphael shared, the pandemic has impacted our business significantly we were forced to shut down our studio and reinvent how to deliver our classes and stay connected with our students in a matter of days. Fortunately, we've never been afraid to try new things and leverage technology in unique ways. My biggest takeaway from this year is to never stop learning and continue trying new things. And finally, Ricardo said, I've been touched by those who've had to suffer and are still suffering from their losses. I believe this era was for purging. It made me a better person when all is said and done. And one of the things that I did wanna share is that this has been a hell of a year and this has been the year of the biz hacker. The biz hacker mentality is a survivor's mentality and it has never been more appropriate than in this moment right now. I wanted to ask, uh, is Nathan Kruger on the line? 
So I, uh, I don't think Nathan was able to make it, but I did want to welcome Nathan uh, into our, uh, as uh, Nathan was, this is the first time he's ever coached with BizHack. So he was, uh, he's now a certified marketing coach with BizHack, joining the more than two dozen other experts uh, who are part of our team. Congratulations, Nathan. And now I want to hand it over to Cheryl Cattell for certificates and graduation. So uh, I'll show you the names and you read them out. And if you have anything else you want to add, uh, you can. Welcome, Cheryl. Okay, so I'd like to um, recognize and certify that we have a certi certificate of completion for Ariella Flat. So yay. For as well, a certificate of completion for Cindy Estes. Yay as well another certificate of completion Cirilla Suarsa yay and a certificate of participation Darren Rothaus congrats and another certificate of completion for David Phillip way to go certificate of completion and blood sweat and tears for Ellen Crane and a certificate of completion for Gerardo Garcia Milian. Congrats. Another certificate of completion for Greg Leaf. A certificate of participation to be followed up with hopefully a certificate of completion by end of December for Immaculate Paul. And another certificate of participation for Ishar Ahmad Danish, and he's from Pakistan. A certificate of completion for Yarbas Benzo, Benznos, Benznos, sorry. And another certificate of completion for Julia Moshu Oppa. A certificate of completion for Kirsten Robbie, my um, teaching assistant in a lot of the marketing labs. A certificate of completion for uh, overachiever Mandy Jenkins in her second time through. The certificate of completion for Marvin Forneste. And another certificate of completion for Michael Pearson. Way to go, Michael. A certificate of participation for Michelle Appleroth Raider. And another certificate of completion for job well done, Michael O'Donnell, who heard from today. A certificate of participation for Other Heiss. A certificate of completion for Pascal Auguste. A certificate of completion for Ricardo Adame. Congratulations. A certificate of completion for Sharon Holm. I knew you could do it, Sharon. A certificate of completion for Serena Andras. And a certificate of participation for Terry Page. Sorry, Tony King, sorry, Tony King. A certificate of completion for Whitney Rogers. And now we'll do the pine crest. I'll turn it over. Congratulations to all of you. I wish I could uh, hand you your scroll, but uh, I'll just send you all a virtual hug. Congrats. <laughs> and uh, the certificate of completion is to signify that you completed all of the course requirements. Uh, a number of those folks who are getting certificates of participation will uh, hopefully upgrade their certificates in the next couple of weeks. It is a demanding course and we do ask a lot of folks. Now, with Pinecrest, this was a challenge because we had 122 graduates. So rather than uh, try to read all these names, um, I wanted to visualize this. And so I put it into a visualization software and something extraordinary happened. So I took this list of the names and their companies and look what came out. Global Independent Group. I couldn't believe it when I saw this and I love, that is a beautiful description of who BizHack's ideal customer is. Global, independent, 
and the community. So uh, congratulations, guys. That was an amazing piece of serendipity. Uh, it also seems that the name Amy is very common. <laughs> Now uh, I want to share the Biz Hacker Award in the culmination of the year of the Biz Hacker, the year of the survivalist, the year of the person who uh, uh, strives to make it. We talk about the Biz Hack course is a high-paced, high-impact program for people who embrace new challenges, are willing to work their tails off, who continuously experiment and try new things, and who treat failure as an opportunity to learn. So these are the elements of the biz hacker mentality. Constant experimentation, embrace the new, fish with a spear rather than a net, be very targeted in your marketing, patience and perseverance, never stop learning, and perhaps most importantly, if you're going to fail, fail big, dare to fail gloriously. And I'm thrilled to announce that the biz hacker award winner, the uh, 16th Biz Hacker Award winner in the history of Biz Hack, as voted by her colleagues, is Cyrilla Sawarsa of Nuts and Nuts. Congratulations, Cyrilla. And now we're gonna and now we're gonna hear Cyrilla share a little bit about her journey and the company that she started, Nuts and Nuts. Thank you, Dan. Thank you all. Um, really wonderful surprise. Okay, let me get to this. I know we are time constrained. Can you all um, see my presentation? Oh, I not yet. Not yet? Oh, um, sorry, how do I, oh, sorry. As you can see, I... Uh... That's okay, there's a little green button um, that yes. you might, and if, if, if you're str struggling, I can uh, always uh, just, uh, advance the slides for you if you like. I got it. Okay. That's it. Can you see me? I mean, can you see the slides now? Mm hmm Yes. Okay. Perfect. We're seeing the last slide, just so you know. Oh, what about now? Now we can see it. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for, uh, for your patience. Um, so the, uh, the story of Nuts Plus Nuts started when um, I was living in New York City, working as a graphic designer. Then one day I got diagnosed with lupus. Lupus is an autoimmune disorder that uh, my immune system attacks my own body and cell. And um, I was so devastated uh, with the uh, diagnosis. So I had to go home uh, to Indonesia to be with my family. While I was recovering and not able to work, my sister purchased cashews uh, directly from a farming community in central Java, Indonesia, and started roasting them using our grandmother's recipe. Uh, I helped her by designing the cashew packages to sell at the local market, and the cashews were a hit and sold out. Uh, my family has always inspired me. My grandmother's passion for cooking and my dad's entrepreneurial spirit helped my sister and me create Nuts Plus Nuts. My name is Sarula Suarsa, and I'm the co-owner of Nuts Plus Nuts, a handcrafted nut company that is committed to sourcing our ingredients directly from farmers. Um, so this is the digital uh, marketing journey of Nuts Plus Nuts. Um, I am not um, a digital marketing person, even though I own a business. Um, I do uh, mostly my business in wholesale. And uh, because of COVID-19, I lost 90% of my wholesale customers uh, in hospitality, wineries, bars, co-working spaces, and corporate events. And as you know, these are the ones that got hit pretty hard. Uh, from, from COVID. So then I had to pivot um, for, to digital marketing um, to learn about Facebook ads. And that's why I turned to BizHack Academy uh, to teach me about uh, how to run ads at Facebook. Um, I have run email marketing and I have social media. However, I never really put a lot of attention to it. I only run email marketing maybe once a year and I'm not really um, into um, you know, posting with social media. So when the class started, um, we have to do uh, the first ad, which is a video view uh, ad. Oh, oops, sorry. Uh, how do I go? Okay, here you go. 
So I ran um, the first ad is a video view ad um, to my audience, which is called uh, Foodie. And I picked the location, which is the, the big cities uh, where I felt that the foodies uh, are located and a couple of my uh, uh, target audience are located, New York, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Chicago. The age is 34 to 60. Uh, the gender is female. And they have the interest in the wine club, food and wine, chef's table, Netflix, uh, foodie, with the household income uh, top 10 to 25% of the zip code. So in the foodie campaign, I ran two ad sets uh, simultaneously. Uh, the first ad was uh, more of a product focus uh, ad. And then the second ad set um, has some emotion uh, in the video on top of the, of the product um, uh, uh, offering. And uh, the finding that we got here was that the, the video views uh, is the cheapest way to, not the cheapest way, it's the cheap way to gather target audience. And the ad with emotion perform better. Um, and the network audience is a no-no and the Facebook changes their algorithm all the time. Um, the result, uh, I didn't get really any sales because this is a video views ad. Um, so then I ran the second um, ad, which is a lead generation ad using the video views um, audience that I've collected. Um, on the second ad that I've run, uh, unfortunately, I ran into a problem with, uh, with the audience. Uh, I was not able to retarget my audience that I ran in the first video views ad because apparently Facebook changes their algorithm. So I, was, uh, I had to scramble and, and collect from my uh, MailChimp list, website traffic, video views, as you can see here in my audience set. Um, so I ran my, my ad, uh, the second one, uh, the second uh, lead generation ad using uh, pretty much the same ad that I ran from the first uh, video ad. Uh, and I used the emotion-based video since we knew from the first, les first lesson that that was the more successful one. However, after I ran that for uh, one day, the data showed that the video average playtime is three seconds and that ad with the emotion was 15 seconds and it didn't get to my product until like maybe second five. So then I have to, again, uh, add the other ad, which is the, the video with the product uh, base. Um, and this is the result from my Facebook ad campaign. So I spent $91 and 98 cents. Uh, the impression that I got is 4,803. It reached 2,988 uh, with, uh, with the CPM $19.15. Um, the video through play was 4,123. I got 19 clicks and I got 10 leads and the number of sale that I got was $21.87. Um, so since I ran um, this ad, while I was running this ad, I was also doing uh, the, um, the other digital marketing um, that I've done, which is the email marketing and the social media. So during class, right before Thanksgiving, I think Alex was um, giving us a, a lesson about the email marketing. So since I've only run it once a year, so I thought, okay, you know what? I got to do this email marketing. So I did it uh, with the zero investment. It was with MailChimp. Uh, it reached 943 of the uh, mailing list that I've had. The open rate was 24%. I got 7% click and the number of sales that I got was uh, 48 and I made sales uh, for the uh, time period from uh, when I sent an email blast for the small business Saturday, which is uh, yeah, Saturday with the coupon co code that ends on Cyber Monday. So for like three days or something like that. And the sales was, uh, I made 30, uh, 3,519. However, because of that email blast, I was able to achieve uh, more sales because there are more corporate uh, gift sales that's coming in, more website sales coming in from there. And uh, so I'm pretty much really swamped 
uh, even until today, I still have to pack my orders. <laughs> um, and the um, the in the social media, um, Cheryl was talking about her uh, LinkedIn uh, pod. So uh, we created, I created a, a Instagram pod among uh, food business owners. So because of that, uh, my Instagram follower went up to uh, 40 uh, plus 40 people, um, which which is great. Um, and then my Facebook page reach uh, during duration of class um, is 1.6 thousand percent. And the aha moment uh, is creating different ads for each uh, per customer persona. Digital marketing is all about testing and learn. Uh, I love the Facebook page transparency. I thought that was a great thing. Uh, creating video in Lumen 5 and Canva. Uh, what's next uh, for me is to create a calendar for social media posting. I'm taking my social media uh, much more now after taking this course. Experiment with different campaign uh, goals at Facebook. Put focus on email marketing and connect with mailing list customers uh, through newsletter. And I promise I will send more than once for the uh, email list. So thank you very much for uh, Dan, uh, Cheryl, Alex, uh, Ricardo, Nathan, and all my classmates to support, um, you know, during this, uh, this sessions. And please follow us on social media. Thank you. Very good. Very, very good. Cyrilla, um, you won this BizHack Award because of your willingness to ask the really hard questions. Um, you challenged the instructors and you pushed for excellence, not only in us, but also in yourself. And, and that was really, you know, the reason why you won. You, you would always stay till the end of class. You, you know, would never leave even when the class was over. Um, you, you always had great and poignant questions. Um, you, you really hustled. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed working with you through this. Um, you took the concepts uh, that you learned and, and really ran with them. So there was no step or assignment where you had to do an email campaign. So hats off to you that you did and look at the results and hopefully you'll be doing, uh, you know, that $20,000 uh, conversion every month instead of just once a year. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing that happen. So um, yeah, I, I think that uh, my favorite moment, Cyrilla, was when we were trying to put your second ad up and your husband was saying, no, 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 don't do it. We have too much business. Stop. <laughs> and so that was, um, I think that's a true testament that uh, you did great things during this class. So congrats. You well deserve. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. One of the things that's great about working with business owners like that is you can get some of their product. Let's see, there it is, nuts and nuts, lightly salted. So uh, I have been eating these. Uh, I'm almost run out. It's been amazing uh, for the late nights that we've been doing to pull off this amazing end to 2020. Um, we're going to wrap up, guys, here on a really high note. Uh, and Cheryl just talked about hats off to Cyrilla, and this is a graduation. It is a virtual graduation. So uh, we have a nice little musical surprise. I did wanna say just before we go to that, that applications are now open for cohort 17. We are absolutely going to sell out. Uh, we do limit the number of seats and the amount of interest because of the situation with COVID is astronomical. People also love taking classes after the new year as part of bettering themselves. So if you're interested, uh, it starts January of 2021, uh, and it is a deductible expense, guys, for 2020 if you actually go ahead and uh, enroll now. 29 to 1 was the average return on investment for people who took the course uh, in 2019. Uh, we actually might do a little better than that uh, with what I've been seeing so far from 2020. You, if you're interested in applying, go to apply.bizhack.com slash scholarship, where you can actually apply uh, in addition for the course for a scholarship that we extend to minority and women-owned businesses and nonprofits. Um, the amount of scholarship money that we gave out this year is $90,000. This is probably the number I'm most proud of. Many of the folks who you saw present today are beneficiaries uh, and are embedded in that number. 
We're going to have an info session tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern time. Please join us. If you go ahead and apply, you will automatically be invited to the info session. And I look forward to seeing you there and telling you more about it. I did want to mention that we have the first um, scheduled uh, event for season three of BizHack Live, the award-winning BizHack Live. It's actually about streamlined financials for small businesses. Not necessarily what you would think BizHack would cover as a digital marketing, but really we are about business-driven improvements. And Mike Lingle has created an extraordinary technology called Rocket Proforma that you can use to do your forecast for 2021. I'm using it for BizHack right now, and it is an absolute thing of beauty. We want to go through the last thank you gifts raffle. This is when the best gifts are given away. We have a 45 minutes uh, of free private coaching uh, on finance and business strategy with Mike Lingle. And the winner is? Ralph Campbell. We have a one hour consultation on how to launch uh, a 10X better product and build a scalable business with Mike O'Donnell. I'm sure this one will be popular. Uh, Lois Padovani. You only charge $3.95 an hour. That's not enough, Mike. Uh, and then we have a $50 Amazon gift card given to us by Marvin Furness, that frontline worker and partner uh, of Mike O'Donnell's. And the winner is? Natalie Robinson. Congratulations, Natalie. That's a good one. Finally, a musical surprise. I don't know if you all knew this, but our man... Ricardo Barris, who coached both the Pinecrest and the Digital Marketers Edge, is also a musician, uh, internationally known as Ricky Ricardo, uh, Ricky Anthony, that's his artist name, and he wrote for us a song that is now available on iTunes called Hats Off to You. Thank you guys. Have an amazing Christmas holiday and a very happy new year. Thank you for sticking with us to the very end. Be safe, be healthy. Let's make it to 2021. I cannot wait for this year to end. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Happy new year, everybody. Thank you for everything you've done this year for us. 
We are so grateful. We are so grateful to being here still today. I wasn't sure that we were going to make it, and now we're stronger than ever. And the reason why we're stronger than ever is because we're stronger together. And you have been here with us every step of the way. God bless. Take care. Have a very happy holidays, everybody.